um, just for a description of the series in general, like who came up with the idea and how do you make something like songwriting sexy and entertaining and entertaining and bravo worthy working in tv for a long time i've heard this pitch uh, you know several times and when um evan came in with true entertainment and brought us the show they pitched it in a way that it was all about the collaborative writing process which instantly added energy and excitement and, a, and an open dialogue about songwriting that wasn't just in someone's head and on paper it really g gave it a voice and put it out in the room um basically the show is you know we take 12 up and coming songwriters to, and they compete over 10 episodes to prove that they are the next big hit maker. Each week we give them a new songwriting challenge to tackle everything from love songs to pop music to a road trip challenge where we actually send them out on a road trip to gather inspiration and, and make it part of their journey, part of their song. You know, in my career for songwriting, I, I hate writing by myself. Like, honestly, like, I, I bore myself. Like, what's exciting for me is the, is the collaborative process. I know what I'm going to come up with. Right. It's like, what am I going to come up with with you today? And then tomorrow, what kind of mood are you in? And what do we come up with then? So, and that's exciting. I mean, there's drama and there's emotion. And, and we all have different opinions. And we'll argue it out. We'll hug it out. And that's, that's really represented on this show. I mean, we, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's not just songwriting. It's these people's real lives and real emotions and real points of view that, that come through their songwriting process when you're suddenly immersed inside this reality competition where they have these wild challenges and hoops that they have to jump through, I was actually quite skeptical and cynical at first because it's one thing to go out into um, the A-list world of writer and writers and producers and say, hey, you know, we're looking for a first single for Usher, and and we're just we're looking for a hit song, but in the context of this show, like Jen and Evan were saying, all of a sudden you have like 20 minutes to come up with a hook, and you know you'll be you'll have to write it from a female perspective and perform it as a country song <laughs> and then flip it into a reggae joint and then you know there there were just so many yeah, yeah but who hasn't done that hurdles the winners uh, the winner of the show wins uh, a publishing deal with Sony and Evan in the writing camp and a record deal with uh, with uh, RCA Jive and $100,000 so it was there was a lot on the line and it really will change someone's career and you know just just shoot them on the path to to where they wanted to be you know if you can make a living being a writer that's amazing you know mm -hmm. I, I think it's a it's a lofty and difficult goal my dad was a songwriter locally um, I ended up going to school long story short when I was about I moved out when I was 15 on my own and went to a school in Michigan and didn't have enough money to leave for spring break um, and so I wasn't allowed to stay on campus and I couldn't afford to go back to Alaska and so I had this genius idea that I would hitchhike through Mexico for spring break, like all parents hope their children do one day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I didn't ever play guitar. My dad always played guitar in our act. And I couldn't read music. But I had written poetry a lot of my life and uh, read a lot. And so it was easy for me to start making up lyrics. My dad taught me to improvise sort of on stage about people. If, if nobody was listening to us in a bar, he'd make up lyrics about them not listening to us to keep me entertained and started street singing about people that walked by me and I just started writing about seeing skyscrapers and building those buildings for the first time I was from a real small town in, in Alaska um, and I would just take my change to the ticket counter and say how far will this get me and then I'd get off there and street sing and it took me about four days to hobo down to uh, San Diego and then I did hitchhike all through Mexico down from Tijuana to Cabo and then around the mainland side Chihuahua and all that and then back to Cabo without being raped so it was a total success <laughs> <laughs> and I got back to school and just had a very long song and that was who will save your soul uh, it was just about hitchhiking around the country and seeing the country for the first time um, and then I got discovered accidentally I wasn't trying to I was uh, homeless for a year because I wouldn't have sex with my boss and uh, he fired me without giving me my paycheck <laughs> And um, I started singing locally like I did with my dad, but I just started writing my own material, not with any lofty goals. I didn't think I was a songwriter, and I didn't think I would ever make it or make a record. I was just sort of looking at like a blue-collar job like I did growing up. Maybe I could make some money and get by and make food. And uh, I got discovered. 
Um, but it was a very unusual experience, and the most rewarding thing for me is, you know, I got validated for who I was. You know, I, I kind of fell into, I, I was a rapper in high school. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> like, that was, that was it. I was like, I'm going to be a rapper. Um, and, you know, and I took it very seriously in high school, and I started interning at Interscope when I was 16 after school and because they had, like, you know, Dre and Snoop and stuff like that. And... Um, you know, I, when I was 18, I tried to get myself a record deal, and no one wanted to sign me. So I just started working in the mailroom at Interscope, and I kind of quit doing the creative side of things, but w always had that creative vibe. And through many years, found myself doing A&R and liked that, but wasn't like in love with that. And then I tried management, and that was like babysitting, and I was like, no way. You came across a guy named Eminem. That uh, happened. A&R Eminem's first album. JR and his manager Zach were like, why don't you try writing? You know, you always, used to write. You write as like a joke, you know, like mm -hmm. why don't you like really write for real? So I wrote a pop song, they're like, I love that. <laughs> and then I wrote a second pop song, and they're like, that's a smash, and let's go shop the group. And no one wanted to sign the group, but everyone wanted to buy my two songs. <laughs> and about six months later, the second song I wrote for the girl group um, went number one in 15 countries. A uh, wow. song called SOS by Rihanna. And uh, I quit the agency. <laughs> and uh, kind of just a big house, and build, your, build your team, but never stop your hustle.